Hey gang, Dr. Benedetto here on a uh, quick lesson we're gonna do today. This is, um, I'm gonna do this video in response to the call that we had, the group call that we had on Thursday. And um, it's a little bit of a deep dive, so I'm gonna try and keep it simple, but we got on the topic of obviously the immune system and immunology. So I wanted to touch on a topic here um, just to help kind of educate everybody on some of the ins and outs and, and really some of the deep stuff when we talk about how do you develop uh, disease, how do you develop autoimmune diseases, things like that. So here's the deal. Okay, so basically we have two parts to our immune system. Now this, this we're gonna go over this diagram in, in some detail, but we basically have two parts to our immune system. If you look on the, on the right side of this picture, you see something that's called Th1 and Th2, okay? TH stands for T helper cells. Okay, so T helper cells are, are uh, immune cells. Okay, and this is basically the way that you develop a disease of any kind. Okay, and we'll keep it more specific for thyroid disease, especially autoimmune thyroid disease and things like that. Okay, here's what happens. If you look on the left side over here, you see physical triggers of an immune response. So these are things that can you can be exposed to that we call a, uh, a that we that we call a trigger right we've used these terms before bacteria viruses fungus toxins food uh, peptides which are proteins allergens medications you name it okay we get exposed to these and something called an antigen presenting cell will identify them and then present it to something called a th0 cell okay so that's so think th0 is like like a stem cell, like it can become anything. It can go any one of these four pathways and be and become a Th1, a Th2, a Th17, a, T, a Treg cell. I hope that makes sense. So we get exposed to something. An antigen presenting cell takes it and presents it to a Th0, kind of like the king, right? We come into battle at the, the feet of the queen or the king. Here's what I have for you. And then the Th0 cell is going to decide what to do with it. Okay, now try not to get too, too bogged down, but you see all these TGF and IL-6 and IL-12 and IFN and IL-4 and 2. Those are what are called inflammatory cytokines. So inflammatory cytokines, cytokines are the chemical messengers of your body that signal inflammation, okay, or some type of inflammatory response, because that's what we're talking about here, right, is an immune response that's causing some kind of reaction, some kind of inflammatory response. So whatever the object is, gets present, gets the antigen presenting cell, takes it to the Th0 and says, here's what I have. What do you want to do with this? Okay. Based on the inflammatory cytokines that are present, right? That's why inflammation is always huge, right? If, for example, there's an IL-2 and an IFN and a TNFA present, the Th0 is gonna to go to the Th1 route. Okay, now Th1 is more uh, short-term immunity, if that makes sense, okay? Th2 is kind of longer-term immunity, okay? So what you'll see is, you'll see, I'm sorry, that's backwards. Th2 is short-term, Th1 is long-term. See, even I get confused sometimes with all this stuff. So uh, yes, Th1 is long-term, Th2 is short-term. So think of Th2 like the, the first responders, okay? Like something, you get a cut, you get an inflammatory response, you get an immune response, Th2. Uh, Th1 is long-term chronic disease. Think, um, think uh, vaccines, right? You get a vaccine you, uh, and then your immune system makes antibodies. So if you come in contact with polio down the road, then um, then uh, your body, your immune system recognizes it. So, okay, Th1, okay? Now, because what happens when we develop autoimmune disease is we get an imbalance between these two. So either the Th1 or the Th2 gets very dominant, okay? And kind of squashes the other one, okay? So here's the deal. We get exposed to something, antigen-presenting cell takes it to the Th0, the king or the queen, and they say, okay, this is what we're going to do with it, okay? And it's going to go Th1 or it's going to go Th2, depending on what inflammatory cytokines are present at the same time. 
okay? Because there's a reaction now that takes place, okay? If we go the TDH1 route, you're going to see primarily autoimmune disease, okay? You see that here, cell-mediated immunity and inflammation, autoimmunity, right? Right there, boom, autoimmunity. We'll blow that up a little bit for you. Um, so that's going to be Hashimoto's, Graves, multiple sclerosis, RA, uh, diabetes, type 1 diabetes, Crohn's. What we'll see is we'll see um, organ rejection, also with transplants and stuff like that. If we go the T2 route, you're going to see things like infectious problems. You're going to see things like fungal infections, Lyme disease, HIV, allergy, asthma, things like that. Okay. Now, why is this important? Okay. Because there's not a whole lot, once these are activated, there's not a whole lot you can do with it or about it, about reversing it, right? Why it's important, and this was the talk we had on Thursday, is there are compounds, herbs, things like that, that we eat or we ingest or we take in supplement form that can stimulate either the T1 or the T2, TH1 or the TH2 pathways, okay? So let's say, for example, your TH1 is very dominant, right? You have Hashimoto's. Your TH1 pathway is very dominant. Your TH2 is down here. And you're taking something like an herb or whatever that actually stimulates the TH1 pathway. So what's going to happen? It's going to make this gap bigger and it's going to make the TH1 uh, pathway stronger or more dominant and you're going to get worsening symptoms. Does that make sense? Whereas if you, we know your TH1 dominant and we give you TH2 stimulants, we can help balance this out and we can help improve someone's condition, if you will. And, and again, not that we're going to get nuts into this immunology here, but I, I, I bring this up because I want everyone to be aware of the fact, and, I, and what I'm going to do actually, uh, right below this video, I'm going to post, these are your more common TH1 stimulants and these are your more common TH2 stimulants. So that way you could say, oh my God, you know, not that we're going to go crazy testing for all this stuff, but it's something to keep in mind. That, it, that could be contributing to someone's ongoing problem is if, if we say, wow, you know, I have Hashimoto's, I'm, I'm going to be more than likely TH1 dominant. And these are all the TH1 stimulants. And you say to yourself, oh my gosh, I'm taking some of those or I'm eating a lot of those. Then there's a good chance we probably want to eliminate them or start to eat or take more TH2 stimulants. Does that make sense? I hope I'm not muddying the waters for everybody. I don't want to get nuts with this because it is very complicated. Um, but I wanted to touch on the subject because I, I, we, we talked about it. There were a couple of people that were there Thursday and I said, you know what, I'm going to make a video on this because I think it'll be valuable for anybody, everybody else. So recap, we get triggers, right? Physical triggers. We're over here, we can see on the left-hand side, infections, toxins, foods, medications, allergies, all that kind of stuff. They uh, stimulate the antigen presenting cell to go to the TH0, the king or the queen, and say, here's what I have. I have this gluten peptide. I have this bacterial infection. I have this medication, whatever. And based on what inflammatory cytokines are there in the mix, like the court gesture, the TH0 is going to go either TH1 hardcore or it's going to go TH2 hardcore. Okay. And that's going to determine the types of diseases or conditions or afflictions that someone's going to present with. At the same time, there are things that we can eat or that we ingest or herbs or things that we take that can, we can, that can be bad if we're stimulating a an already dominant pathway, it's going to make it worse, or it could be good if we can use them to stimulate the weaker pathway to balance them out to help uh, treat or manage someone's condition. I hope that makes sense. That's as crazy as we're going to get today. So if you have questions, post them. We can talk about this on future calls, obviously, but if you have specific questions, just post them below here. I will also list, um, put the two separate lists, TH1, TH2 stimulants. So that way you can see, and that way we can have a discussion or you can be like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm probably TH1 because I got Hashimoto's uh, dominant and I'm eating that, 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 I'm taking that in supplements, whatever it is. And then we can talk about it from there. Um, I hope this has been educational for the gang. And uh, any questions, again, please let me know, reach out. Have a great day.